delivery bases. Six, that all bars, nightclubs, cinemas, gyms and casinos must close. Seven, and that all international flights to and from Hari Mwangankumbula, Simon Mwasaka Puepue, and Fuwe International Airports are suspended. Instead, all international flights should land and depart from Kenneth Kaunda International Airport only to ensure an efficient and effective screening of travelers as well as following them up by our health authorities. Countrymen and women, while these measures have had positive impact in addressing COVID-19, I'm also alive to the fact that the measures have had serious negative impact on our people's lives and livelihoods. During this period, and on each passing day, I have been spending sleepless nights as I think about that woman in Chilenji who sells chikanda and ground nuts by the street, that barber in Chiwempala, and that young lady who plaits hair in Mazabuka at a salon. With the coming into effect of the measures I announced in my last address on COVID-19, our people's livelihoods, and indeed those of many others, have been adversely affected. I am fully aware that many Zambians are not earning their usual income because businesses have been disrupted while others are not working because their workplaces have closed due to COVID-19. I'm aware that some of you have been saying we would rather die from COVID-19 than die from hunger. But I advise you to choose life. Please choose life. I'm also alive to the fact that during this period, the economy has not performed well. For instance, the quacha rapidly deteriorated from around 13 quacha 15 gwe before COVID-19 to now around 19 quacha to a US dollar. This means that the national budget has equally depreciated by a similar margin. And as a consequence, allocations to ministries, provinces, and other spending agencies have been thrown into disarray. Countrymen and women, while the measures I announced could have had negative effects, they also have yielded positive results in mitigating the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. In this regard, we must all pay tribute to the multi-sectoral frontline workers because without their courage, valor, and patriotism, the carnage would have been beyond our control. Despite many of us tending to express ourselves too much and publicizing ourselves too much and trying to be the heroes of our nation, COVID-19 has shown and taught us that an integrated, coordinated, multi-sectoral response which cuts across all boundaries of any form, across political divide, creed, race, or color, can yield desired results. As we pay tribute to our frontline workers of different disciplines, such as doctors, nurses, police officers, border control personnel, and cleaners, among others, we must also ensure that they are protected 
unveiled personal protective equipment, PPEs, so that we do not endanger their lives while they are saving our lives. Clearly, the victories we have scored in the recent past as a nation are anchored on unity of purpose among all players towards the war against COVID-19 pandemic. Yes, we lost a young man who was full of life, an enterprising businessman to COVID-19. My heartfelt condolences go out to his family. Our health workers did what they could, but unfortunately, he could not make it. May his soul rest in peace. Countrymen and women, let me draw your attention to today's statistics about COVID-19 pandemic in Zambia. Today, 17 patients have been discharged, and out of 82 tests conducted in the last 24 hours, no new positive cases have been reported in the last 24 hours. This marks the seventh consecutive day with no new positive case recorded in Zambia. Therefore, our cumulative numbers are as follows. Total number of COVID-19 cases recorded in Zambia remain at 39, with one death, 24 discharges. Currently, 14 patients are admitted, among them two on the copper belt. All patients under quarantine or isolation are stable, except for a 74-year-old man whose condition has been unstable. The Ministry of Health is currently investigating a suspicious death that occurred in the University Teaching Hospital on Thursday, 8th April 2020, and government will revert with further information on this particular case. Countrymen and women, the major threat to our response is complacence. There is clear evidence from other countries that after a period of zero recordings of COVID-19, there is always a possibility of resurgence of cases, particularly when control measures are relaxed. There is still an opportunity to sustain these gains that we have attained to date and preserve the country's health security by scaling up interventions that have proven to be effective, such as the ones we have instituted in our country. Countrymen and women, arising from the successes recorded in the last two weeks, I now extend the period of the current measures to another two weeks, depending on how the pandemic evolves. Countrymen and women, the following personal and social behavioral conducts must be adhered to by all citizens in addition to those I announced a fortnight ago. One, all citizens are advised to ensure that they wear face masks at all times, particularly in public places such as markets, buses, bus stops, and shopping malls. Two, all citizens are reminded to practice high levels of personal hygiene, like washing or sanitizing hands frequently. Three, all citizens are reminded to cover their mouths with a flexed elbow when coughing. Four, all citizens are reminded to use tissue 
when sneezing and carefully dispose of it in a bin. Five, all citizens are reminded to avoid touching their faces and not to shake hands. Six, all citizens are reminded to observe social distancing every time and everywhere while limiting movements. Please stay home in order to stay safe. Countrymen and women, let us clean and disinfect frequently touched objects and surfaces. Let us, if possible, stay at home. And most of all, let us practice social distancing. I know that we have poorly adhered to social distancing based on many reasons, including social economic factors. So if we cannot stay apart from each other, as prescribed by the health experts, for example, in minibuses and markets, please ensure that you use face masks as a minimum standard. Countrymen and women, besides human-to-human -human transmission, as recently observed in our country, it has been noted after medical analysis that the next threat of the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic is dependent on how we manage businesses among our borders with regard to cross-border traders, truck drivers, and travelers in general. Efforts must be put in place to ensure that we strictly monitor all our borders and systematically screen, test, and quarantine all incoming travelers in a coordinated or multi-sectoral manner. Countrymen and women. Cabinet has approved the contingent budget for COVID-19, and I would like to appeal to all ministries provinces and spending agencies to strictly adhere to the provisions of the Public Finance Act in the application of the resources being appropriated. In this regard, I hereby direct all controlling officers to work closely with the Controller of Internal Audit and the Auditor General to properly account for these resources. I would like to caution all ministries and provinces and indeed other spending agencies to ensure that these resources are put to good use. Cabinet office should streamline cost centers and provide direction by way of aligning resources to the COVID-19 contingency programs and budget. All COVID-19 resources, whether in kind or in monetary form, from cooperating partners as well as well-wishers must be integrated and coordinated into the Ministry of Health's COVID-19 programs and budget as the Ministry implements the provisions of the Public Health Act and statutory instrument number 21 and number 22. I expect all ministries which are major cost centers to prioritize beneficiaries of these resources above everything else. And these include the welfare of frontline personnel purchase of medical supplies and public protective equipment, logical support to assist in the enforcement of measures and other matters that will enable us achieve our objective of winning this battle against COVID-19. Countrymen and women, 
In view of the current impact of COVID-19 on the economy, my government is implementing the following measures as an initial intervention. One, the government has released 2.5 billion kwacha to reduce domestic areas owed to domestic suppliers of goods and services. The money also includes the reduction on outstanding areas to pensioners under public service pension fund and retirees who are claimants under the Ministry of Justice. It will also reduce outstanding third party areas and other employee related commitments. My heart bleeds to see pensioners in misery at various ministries waiting in vain to get their dues. I hope this disbasement will cushion their pain. I'm also aware that some chancers and dishonest people have taken advantage of this situation and also line up to be paid. I'm afraid he will not be considered because this money is for genuine retirees. Insisting on getting money you are not entitled to will end you in jail. Two, government has released 140 million kwacha to pay local contractors in the road sector. These resources will ensure that Zambian contractors and suppliers are not thrown out of business. Three, government has removed provisions of total instrument number 90 relating to the claim of VAT on imported spare parts, lubricants, and stationery. For further, the Bank of Zambia has taken measures to encourage use of digital financial services and mobile transaction services. Five, more importantly, the Bank of Zambia has provided a 10 billion quarter line of credit to banks that may face liquidity challenges and revoked statutory instrument for classification and provisioning of loans. I direct the Minister of Finance to ensure priority is given to small and medium scale enterprises, SMEs, that are adversely affected by the impact of the COVID-19. The benefits of this move should go to businesses such as schools, gymnasiums, restaurants, bars, and nightclub owners whose businesses have been halted and have sent their workers home. Commercial banks are obliged to give them loans at an affordable rate to enable their businesses to survive. Countrymen and women, in conclusion, please let us not break the rules at the expense of our lives. Let us not endanger our families. Those whose employers have said stay home do not report for work. Stay home. Meanwhile, we shall keep on reviewing the situation day by day as the COVID-19 pandemic evolves. Let me take this opportunity to thank faith-based organizations such as churches and mosques who have told their congregants to pray from home I would also like to thank my cabinet for working in a coordinated and organized manner. Finally, I would also like to thank cooperating partners, the private sector, private individuals, and others who have immensely donated 
finances and logistics to Zambia. Lastly, but not the least, let me also thank the media for sensitizing the public on the COVID-19 pandemic and you, the Zambian people, for your support, cooperation, and unity as we together fight this war. May I take this opportunity to also wish you all a blessed Easter weekend. May God bless you all, and I thank you. That was His Excellency, Mr. Edgar Chagwalungu, President of the Republic of Zambia, addressing the nation on COVID-19. It's an address that's been keenly followed by the people all around the country, and we appreciate still your company. Now, we are going to just look at uh, uh, some of the pronouncements that the president has mentioned. Suffice to mention that all the pronouncements he did make in the first address to the nation, he says those will continue in the next two weeks more, of which those two weeks will again fall under review. As and when the situation dictates, he will certainly come back, as indicated in there. Now, just quickly to run you through some of the pronouncements he's made regarding to um, the update in terms of the numbers. So he mentions that today there has been no case, no positive case recorded. 17 patients discharged. Cumulative 39 still, one death. 24 discharged discharges in total and he mentions that uh, there was a death that occurred at the university teaching hospital on thursday which um, medical personnel are assessing and uh, obviously maybe as we get into tomorrow's update we could actually get to be given details uh, regarding what the cause was because this occurred suspiciously as the president did indicate as regards the economic status of the country it does reckon the economy has really um, suffered a lot of setbacks because um, um, economic activities have come to a standstill at country level, even at global level. One thing that I also noted was uh, his indications that um, his heart goes out to every Zambian business person at a small scale level. 
the marketeers, the barber men, the women uh, plaiting their hair, their hair, their hair there. Uh, their business has been adversely affected because the flow of traffic to those businesses obviously uh, could have been affected. Elsewhere, kudos to frontline workers during this particular period, the medical personnel, police officers, defense teams, and all those at border points. A lot has been said, and in studios I'm still accompanied by Franklin Tembo, junior executive producer, TV One, and also accompanying me this time around is uh, Motisunge Zulu, is national chairperson for the, national, uh, the Economics Association of Zambia. Thank you so much for still staying with me. I'll start with you, Franklin. The president hasn't relaxed anything. And so far, seven days, we can say the nation can breathe a sigh of relief, we could say, in terms of uh, numbers. No new cases have been recorded. And already I've just been going through some of the messages. People are saying, well, why not relax? But obviously, the record we are looking at is over 1,400,000 cases recorded globally, over 80,000 deaths recorded. There's still some serious scrutiny that needs to be put in place to effect um, measures that can bring down the numbers of COVID-19 and pro uh, probably completely eradicate it? Well, the, the president recognizes that there's a lot, been a lot of work that's been done to keep the numbers as low as they are uh, in the country. But at the same time, he uh, goes on to talk about the fact that what could be a problem would be to allow complacency to take over, uh, describing it as a major threat. Um, we still have 14 active uh, cases uh, from you know, you know the total uh, th that uh, Zambia has uh, ha has recorded. Uh, but suffice to say that um, the extension means um, uh, more slowdown. Um, but the government re realizing that you know. Businesses have people that work for them. Businesses have somehow to have a little bit of a lifeline, and the government has given, uh, you know, a bit of lifeline, you know, especially to, uh, you know, small and medium, uh, you know, enterprises. Kind of what you might call a stimulus package, and uh, the details of that I'll leave for Mr. Sunga to break <laughs> down. But in as far as that is concerned, so you've got loans that have been given to businesses mm -hmm. um, again, because uh, at the end of the day, what you don't want at the end of this particular. Uh, period is for uh, some businesses never ever to rise and that is uh, probably a possibility mm -hmm. uh, for some of the enterprises uh, you know that uh, have been set up we have a lot of hard-working Zambians that have built businesses from nothing mm -hmm. this scenario does not favor in, in them the at all. In the face of a local Zambian in the compound is it really that serious that we now have 14 cases but still continue under the measures that you pronounced a little earlier how serious is this problem how serious is the pandemic to well, just I, paint a picture? I, I can't answer you from a medical perspective, but I have come to learn mm. that uh, there's, the, the, there's an incubation period. Um, uh, so you're looking uh, good today. They put you in isolation for the, the two weeks, and uh, you know, you're know you either going to test negative or you might test uh, uh, positive. We've been taught by health experts that there are certain cases of rec you know, recurring uh, you know, attacks are happening in some people that have you know, uh, gone to be, uh, to be negative. But that's, you know, that's a scientific area. I don't want to take a risk in, in, in going into. But um, the best approach right now, which is being given to the public, is to avoid social distancing. I mean, to avoid uh, close contact and mm -hmm. promote social distancing. Um, to, just to, to, to stop or to deny the virus from jumping from me, you know, uh, to yourself. The emphasis on wearing of masks is, is uh, you know, kind of says it all mm -hmm. in, that, in, in that regard. So that if I have the virus, I don't transmit it to you. And if you don't have it, you don't get it because you're well covered. Um, the uh, bigger picture here is that um, the economy will continue to be slow. You know, in the midst of interventions that the government has put in place to uh, kind of give um, a breathing or a bit of life uh, to some enterprises, recognizing the uh, needs of pensioners, for example. Um, th that is the president thinking about those that may not even have any uh, form of income whatsoever, mm -hmm. uh, whether there is COVID-19 or whether there is not because they, they're not working anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's um, a lot of you know, thinking going into the a balancing act yeah. uh, as, as, as it may. Great. Uh, Mutisunga Zulu is National Secretary of the Economics Association of Zambia. Now he's here with us. Uh, before I get to ask one or two from the point as I got there, what has caught your attention, especially when it comes to making sure that the economy still remains despite these uh, challenges? 
Thank you. So, the president, in his speech, the president is put aside his role as commander in chief. He's now being an economic manager. He's also being a health manager at the same time. Let's start with health. He's more concerned about health because it's priority number one right now. Mm -hmm. You can't talk about uh, labor if uh, you overlook health. So, your factors of production, which is labor, first number one, must be in good shape. That should be a point that a, a business person will find hard to digest. Well, uh, a business person is an entrepreneur, but an entrepreneur still needs labor. An entrepreneur is a human being, and a human being must be in a healthy state. So the president is also being a risk manager, extending the partial lockdown for another 14 days He's taking a very cautious approach, and he talks about the need for us not to be complacent. Yes, seven days, we thank God that we haven't uh, recorded any cases. But then, uh, sadly, outside Zambia, we're seeing how this has ravaged families. There have been deaths. Uh, we've, we've only recorded one death. So mortality in mm -hmm. Zambia is like one over uh, 39 uh, cases, and may he so... Uh, rest in peace. So that's a very cautious approach and we still need to be very careful in terms of sanitizing our hands, uh, not touching our faces, wearing masks and it's a prudent approach to managing this because he does acknowledge that if this uh, virus does spread it will have repercussions. We've already felt what the repercussions are. Um, you and I know that uh, employment has become a very very critical factor because people are being laid off people are not working, so that's affected productivity. Simple example is, uh, you see that the president is concerned about the entire economy, but he makes much more emphasis on the, the lady in Chilenje who sells uh, African Polony, which is Chikanda, mm. okay? And they're not able to uh, make ends meet. The cost of living has actually gone up. So productivity has actually waned, and uh, citizens are actually bearing the brand. So this is a decision, a strike, balance between uh, us having to protect health, putting it number one, the healthy workforce, and then these other things can come later on. So if this virus is contained, then can we think about uh, stimulating this the economy? economy. Let, let's yes. quickly go to the bar owners, nightclubs, and yes. gymnasium owners. The president mm -hmm. does uh, make a very good pronouncement that could probably make them smile there. Yes. Uh, so so there, there, there are two things there. He talks about uh, when businesses uh, are in this type of uh, scenario where conditions are adverse, the most important thing is liquidity. So how will they weather this storm during the pandemic? And how will they um, survive and expand and continue with their normal course of business post-pandemic? He talks about uh, the central bank, which is the Bank of Zambia, uh, they had measures that they did announce on the 3rd of April where they've made available a 10 billion quarter uh, medium term refinancing emergency facility that commercial banks can go and draw from and extend credit. Mm, um, that's affordable. Exactly. So one thing you need to understand is uh, commercial banks ideally would want uh, individuals to meet the basic requirements before because they're taking risk to go and lend. There are other provisions that um, in the back, in the background that the president didn't measure, which was relaxation of, uh, he talked about scrapping off of a statutory instrument, which is number 142, which provides for stricter uh, provisioning classification. That has been relaxed, meaning banks will now have an incentive to be able to lend out to those classes mm. that in, in essence they would want to keep away from because they were risky. But this is a social cause, this is a noble cause where um, credit would need to be extended to yeah. gyms, bar owners, and any uh, SMEs that are really bearing the brunt of this. And that's the only uh, measure that will allow them to you know, get their businesses back. So it's, right now, it's about survival. So after survival and businesses get back to normal operating models, can they think about uh, expansion? And the, the, the importance of survival in a business is because remember, it is the business that will then start to create uh, employment. So clearly you can see that this is all factors of production at play. Great. Uh, I know we'll be calling you again after this one so that we can sit properly and be able to, um, mm -hmm. in detail, look at this. But frankly, as, as we get to wrap up, um, 
just how do you hope Zambian media, for example, would best interpret what is going on around the globe to make the people understand in simple terms the gravity well, of what we are dealing with? Well, I, I think for me, this scenario brings, uh, you, you know, to the fore the, you know, what, what the responsibilities of a government. Mm. Because it, in, in this case, it's very clear that government is taking risks on, uh, you know, on behalf of banks, uh, for example. Um, the, the, there'll be loans that will be given, and I'm, I'm, and I'm thinking that um, you know people go and borrow. Will, will they borrow within their means? Will they borrow beyond uh, what uh, they can uh, they can afford? I don't know what mechanisms uh, you know this at the end of at the end of the uh, the period will uh, will bring in. Is um, it, will it be everybody expected uh, to give back? What will be the repayment period? How does it work in a scenario which is as unique uh, mm -hmm. as this one is? Um, will, 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 will it be possible that some people will abrogate uh, the promise? Are there any promises that to be made uh, during this uh, during this period? Will this be used mm. as an excuse to get more than what is Thank deserving? Thank you so much, so, Franklin. A, a lot of questions, which I don't think we will have I to want come to give uh, Mutisunge. Yeah. We will come back probably some other time so that the two of you can in, uh, make up that panel to discuss. Right now, quickly, we will have to wrap it up. But quickly, if you missed the update, the president mentioned 17 patients out of hospital. And... Um, in total, 24 discharges have been conducted, 39 cumulative uh, positive cases the country has recorded with one death. We will be back again with another update tomorrow. I'm Samuel Machishi. Goodbye. Public door handles contain millions of bacteria that we cannot see. Protect yourself with Hygienics Instant Hand Sanitizer. It kills over 99.9% .9 of harmful bacteria that we cannot see. Hygienics Instant Hand Sanitizer, the waterless germ killer. Using an alcohol-based hand sanitizer is one of the World Health Organization's recommended measures to reduce risk of coronavirus infection. Please follow the additional guidelines recommended by health authorities like WHO and local health authorities. This message is brought to you in association with Hygienics Hygiene Soap and Hygienics Instant Hand Sanitizer. Hygienics, making Zambia safe. Trade Kings, improving lives. Savenda Group of Companies believes in Zambia's ability to rise above whatever challenges she may face, just like an eagle in his flight. We know that working together as one Zambia, one nation, our efforts of washing our hands with soap regularly, coughing into folded elbows, avoid touching our faces, avoiding crowded places, and staying at home with family if need be to avoid getting infected or infecting our loved ones with the virus. Surely, 